But I have learned in trying to follow the vision of Andre Kertes in my photography is that you have to believe in your own doings. That way you can get the boost in your own perception that is needed to be able to see with your heart and catch the moment like Andre Kertes himself said. You have to see with your heart and catch the moment. Kertes was shooting a lot without going far from his home. It looks like many of his photos were taken just from the nearby street or a park or even within his like apartment, just taken from the balcony or through a window. He said somewhere that he never went far to take a photo. That is not true because in his published work, there's also photos from trips around the world. Nevertheless, he was working a lot from nearby his home. And it's a good thing to remember for all of us who enjoy photography, that you don't have to get to the mountains or to the shore or in that and that city. You can enjoy photography just nearby where you live. But who was Andre Kertes anyway? Andre Kertes was one of those influential Hungarians of the 20th century. Before the Second World War, his work became very famous in Paris. In his photographs, time gets frozen, but the skin gets a new life of its own. There's a, often a lot of tension in his work in a playful way. When he was forced to migrate to US, the non-straight style that was so obvious to work in Europe of that time didn't much interest the contemporaries in New York. He lived a long life and made hundreds or thousands of masterful photographs that may look like casual snaps but have a lot of soul. There's about 1,000 starlings on the wire and I'm thinking if Andre Kertes would have bothered with those. I did. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. I was biking home from the spot that I was shooting starlings just now. And I said that he probably would have not bothered with starlings. But I was thinking about it and I think that's a very wrong way to think about Andre Kerdes photography. He wasn't shooting the content or, or like the context of the picture didn't or wasn't that important. It was not the subject that he wanted to bring out. It was more about the composition. But not only that, it, I think the essence is somewhere there that the subject has to be recognizable. You have to have some connection to it. The composition has to be correct. And things have to have some movement. Either something is happening in a picture in a way that it kind of like suggests some movement somewhere, or there's an idea of, of some continuity that something is going to happen. And therefore, if it's a starling or some whatever, find a bird or whatever kind of building, a factory, a poorhouse, a hospital, whatever. He didn't care about that. He cared about the uh, sort of like, I would like to say pick a picture, but that makes no sense really. Something that connects him as a photographer and a spectator of that particular scheme to the viewer who sees the photograph. That's a connection and I think Andre Kerdes was doing really well. I hope I can find something like that in my pictures one day. I don't know if this is going to work out. I found a nice trees. But I don't have telephoto. 
Perhaps cropping will do. When I started this project, Andre Kertes wasn't the first that I had in mind. But after doing some research, he was quickly to become the number one choice that I'm want to try to take image not unlike that's because I could make difference in his style that is different from many others and sort of that means that I, I have a vision of his vision so it's not I don't know obviously I don't have his vision, I just have an idea of what he was kind of like, how, how did he see his photographic. But that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take photos that are not too much unlike under Kertes photos and so far I've been enjoying it a lot. It's a great way to see our work in a bit new, in a new way. I'm really happy I, I'm trying to do this. But there's a problem. Now I have realized that making photos like Andre Kerdes is really difficult. He was he was brilliant in making the connection between the the spectator and the, like what what's happening in the photo or what's going to happen in the photo. It kind of like spring builds on you, your experiences and sort of like expectations. How do you do that? Weeks are going by and I'm not thinking about Andre Kertes anymore every time I'm going out for a shoot. I was just uh, a couple of weeks ago shooting with this point and shooter and when I was watching the pictures, I realized that now it has happened. The thing that I was hoping for. I have uh, I've been taking different kind of photos that I was, I was taking a year ago. And they might have something to do with this Andre Kertes project that I have had on. I'm very happy I took on this project. And uh, I've been learning a lot, thinking about in a bit in a new way and of course studying a lot of, of his another photo covers photos too. What do you think? Uh, do you think this kind of thing like where you are going to uh, take your own photos not unlike some other photographer is it going to do good? Uh, are you have you done that sometime have you done that yourself or are you planning to do it or would you be interested in seeing another video like this where I would be taking on on some other photographer in mind? Please put in comments if you have any thoughts about these things. And what do you think about Andre Kertes as a photographer? Photographers have probably always looked back on the previous generation and trying to learn from the old, old masters and trying to replicate their style in their own uh, style and ideas in their own photography. Uh, so the idea itself is not new, but to make a video about this, I strongly recommend you to watch Fredrik Trovatten in YouTube. Uh, he's, he has been doing videos like this uh, a handful or a bit more, and they are just great. Please take a look. He's doing a great job. Another thing about Fredrik Trovatten is that now, recently he's been taking his camera to a studio, which is something totally new to him, at least that's how he says, and he's making great photos. So, that's a great example of how you can try to improve your photography by doing something a bit else, what you normally do. And you can learn a lot. I'm very happy I took on this Andre Kertes uh, project and I've learned a lot. I did not become 
Andre Kertes, which was not the idea anyway, but I I, th I think this is, has done very good to my passion and I've gotten a lot of new ideas and I, I, I think I also got more confidence in, in my own style, all that. So highly recommend it to do an exercise like this. And thanks for watching and have a great day.